We're hot, we're single, we're ready to mingle. You know what, Neve? It's time to get rid of this pillow. Staying home is not the new going out. I'm going out in 2020, and I'm finding love this year. <laughs> Yay for Molly finding love! It's gonna happen. I believe it. Putting it in the universe. Bring it to me. Hello, you guys. It is Molly here again for another video. Welcome to my boring background. Yes, it's only cute because it has a cute dog in it. That's why I brought him here. I needed some cuteness in this drab new background I have. It's gonna be cute soon. I swear I'm working on it. Okay, you see the title of today's video, The Truth About Dating as a Woman with a Disability. Yeah, dating is a topic I've talked about a lot over the years on social media. I've shared bad date stories, which by the way, I've got a doozy. If you you guys want to hear the absolute worst date I've ever been on? I recently shared that horror story of a date on a podcast, 51 First Dates. This guy is immediately rude to the waiter. That's uh, a red flag. That's red. not yellow. That yeah, is that's bright red. red. That's I can't stand. There is no reason to ever be rude to the waiter. Nope. Unless like they're seriously dropping the ball or something. Yeah. But they like it was just like this nice older gentleman trying to be helpful. And guess Ugh. what? He orders for me without asking what I wanted. I'll link it below if you want to hear it, but I can also tell it here on YouTube. So let me know if you'd like to see that. But yeah, I've shared the good, the bad, the ugly, and the super single that is my dating life. And why not talk about more? Dating's a challenge, but I'm being optimistic and less jaded in 2020. That's my resolution. And I'm being open to finding love this year because I am not willing to hit five years a singleton. We're hot, we're single, we're ready to mingle. That's right, people. And we're gonna do that over on on Facebook dating. I want to thank Facebook dating for sponsoring this video and for working with me. I'm actually getting paid for being single. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we love that. I'm really excited. My brother actually works at Facebook. So this was super cool. I feel like I like joined the Facebook fam. Facebook dating is a new feature found within the Facebook app. So you don't have to download any new apps or anything. You'll just be able to find it on the app. I'll pop up a photo of my profile. It says dating in Toronto because I made my profile when I was in Toronto over Christmas. So I've been using it for like a little over a month now and I've actually been really really enjoying it. I've pretty much tried all the dating apps and um, have thus far not had much luck clearly that's why I'm single but I've mainly not had much luck because there's only one dating app currently in existence that's even kind of accessible and that's been really frustrating for me because so many of my friends have been like yeah I found my boyfriend or my girlfriend on a dating app and I'm like well I only have one that I can use and it's not even like fully fully accessible so when Facebook reached out and let me know that they were starting Facebook dating and wanted to work with me on it. Obviously, of course, at first I was like, is it accessible? But I know the commitment Facebook has always had to accessibility, so I figured it would be and I was right when I tried it out. It is by far the most accessible dating app I've ever tried. It's the only dating app that I've been able to set up from the very beginning 100% on my own. I built my own profile, I started swiping, I had conversations, everything entirely on my own without help, so that was really exciting for me. So thank you, Facebook dating for being accessible for us disability queens. We love you. Facebook dating also has a lot of really unique features that I've never seen or heard of on any other dating app. I can tell that they put a lot of work into thinking of how this could be unique, fun, safe space for everyone. One thing that I really, really appreciate as somebody with a lot of friends in the LGBTQ plus community is they have a lot of different gender identities that you can select, which is super cool. I also love this feature called Secret Crush. So if you use Facebook dating, none of your Facebook friends will see that you're using it. It also won't show you any of your Facebook friends, which is good, so awkward when you're swiping. You're like, ooh, I know that person, we work together. So it's not gonna show you anybody that's on your Facebook profile and you can actually submit names of people that you also don't want to see your profile. So that's super cool. But if you put the name of somebody into Secret Crush, then if they also put you into secret crush, your crushes will like be revealed, which if you guys know my dating history, you know, Matt, my ex-boyfriend, we were together for two and a half years, but he was like one of my best friends for four years before that. So we went through this super awkward transition phase of like, do we like each other? It was so awkward. We literally had to have a mutual friend be like, she likes you, he likes you. And then we like made a move that night and like made it official. But if we had had secret crush Facebook dating, we would have just been able to be like, submit the name, submit the name, reveal the crush. So I think that's super cool. But if you submit their name and they don't put your name in, they will never find out. 
So I think that's a really fun feature. You can also put like religion, height, all of these different things to really hone in on your right match. And another thing I think is really cool is it bases it off the pages that you like, the events you're going to on Facebook. So it really uses the existing information on your Facebook profile to make sure it's showing you the right people. So it's not just like, oh, they're five miles or five kilometers away from you. It really is like, hey, they both like Ed Sheeran, they're both vegans and they're both going to this event at the beach on Saturday. So they might like each other. So I think that's really fun. But safety is kind of my number one priority. And that's ultimately the thing I kind of want to talk about in this like truth about dating as a woman with a disability video, because safety is my number one concern and my number one issue and my number one fear when it comes to dating as a female with a disability. And so the feature that excited me the most and that I'm like shocked nobody else has ever done before is their safety features. So the one that really caught my attention the most is that you can share your live location with somebody through Facebook Messenger. So I could like send my best friend Paige or my brother Brady my location and who I'm with through Facebook Messenger from Facebook dating. And I can also send them like where I'm going on the date ahead of time, stuff like that. So a lot of information can be shared. You select who you're sharing it with and when you're sharing it. So it keeps you really safe and those that love you will know exactly where you are in case you need help. So that was something that I really loved and appreciated because it is, like I said, my biggest concern. And I think it's a lot of people's biggest concern when it comes to dating. So a lot of people have this idea that dating through an app is less safe than meeting somebody and dating in traditional means. And I don't necessarily feel like that's true as a modern woman who does most of my dating over the last four and a half years as a singleton through dating apps. I've never really felt like it's less safe. And maybe it's just because of the precautions that I take or the experiences that I've had meeting people in real life. But as a blind woman, if I meet you at a bar, I don't know what you look like, you know? I don't, and I'm not saying that to be shallow. I'm not like, I don't know if he's hot enough for me. It's like, you could ask me out at a coffee shop and you could be 57 and I wouldn't know. You could look like really sketchy and I wouldn't know. So I've never felt comfortable giving my number out to guys that ask me out at like a bar or a party or a coffee shop because I can't like verify that they look like who they're telling me they are. And somebody actually recently asked me, like, has anybody ever bamboozled you? Like, have, have they ever shown up and it's a catfish? And I've never actually had that experience because of the precautions that I do take before I meet with people online. I don't like match with somebody and meet them that night. That's not how I do it because I do want to be safe and take precautions because this is where the truth of dating as a woman with a disability comes in. The reality is 90% of women with disabilities are sexually assaulted and raped and abused. And that is a absolutely terrifying statistic to live with. I'm honestly glad I didn't know it when I was younger and started dating because I think it would have really scared me away from even putting myself out there and trying to date to begin with. I did learn this a few years ago when I was lucky enough to speak at the United Nations and it was at a you know big conference about world accessibility. So there was representation from all the different countries and I was chosen by the Canadian government to represent Canada as one of few young people with disabilities. And so we were going to different sessions and I spoke about how to cultivate leadership in young people with disabilities around the world, but I was able to go in and out of different sessions. And one of the sessions I went into was about safety for women with disabilities. And when I heard that statistic and when my mom who was with me heard that statistic, it was kind of like a bombshell dropping. And they shared that specifically of that 90% women who are deaf and women who are blind are at most risk because one of our main senses to kind of keep us safe and aware of our surroundings is compromised. And there's nothing to make you feel more vulnerable than that because living with a disability, it's like, you know you're vulnerable, you know the world thinks of you as being more vulnerable, but I feel like a strong, confident, independent woman. I don't walk around like feeling insecure and vulnerable and scared of the world until I'm like actually faced with the facts. And and a number of years ago, I was also in a documentary on French television in France. And this producer flew over to Canada where I was living at the time to film. He was such a nice guy, Pierre. We're like still in touch with him and his family to this day. And he was sharing with me, and I won't share the actual statistics because I don't remember them, but essentially they had done a study in Europe that said that blind women are less likely to get married and more likely to get divorced than men who are blind. And again, that was like this big moment of being like, oh wow, I am gonna struggle more to date. You know, I hear a lot of my friends, a lot of young people talk about how 
how hard it is to date nowadays and the dating culture. And I look at all of those things and I think, yeah, I face all of those normal everyday dating struggles and then some. And it can get really hard to stay optimistic about finding love when I know those facts. And I think I spent a lot of the last year to year and a half of my life feeling really jaded and really down and really guarded and closed off to dating. And I've been feeling just very negative in general. I mean, back in the spring, I made a video like I haven't been kissed in a year. I've just really like put my head down and been like, it's just not gonna happen for me because I know those facts and because I know how hard it is for everyone. But I'm trying really hard now to be open and optimistic and positive in 2020 about love while being safe and smart about dating. So one thing that makes me feel safe is of course Gallup having a 95 pound, yeah, he's gained a bit of weight. We're working on it, don't worry. He's on a post Christmas diet. His resolution is to lose a few in 2020. It's okay, we love your curves. But having Gallup, eight makes me feel a heck of a lot safer and honestly I wouldn't go on a date if I had to leave him at home. I wouldn't. Like if he was sick or something I would not go on that date. I would not meet a man without Gallup being there. So that's one thing that as a disabled woman makes me feel a lot safer in life but especially when it comes to dating because I feel like ain't nobody gonna mess with me with him by my side and let me tell you if anybody tried he would be right there to make sure they did not get very far. So that's one thing and that's I mean one of many reasons I have a guide dog. Another thing that that makes me feel safe is doing like a lot of as much research and vetting of the guy as I can before I meet him. If we have any mutual friends, I reach out to them I'm like, hey, what's this guy like? I saw that you also have him on Facebook or like tell me about him. Another thing that my mom and I do or a friend and me, like whoever's with me at the time, I'll actually have them like sneaky, sneaky be there. So for example, some things that I've done is like if I was with my assistant at the time, my assistant and I like both walked down out of my apartment at the same time, but maybe she'd be like 10 steps or like five steps ahead of me. And she'd kind of like look back and be like, yeah, he looks like the photos and like keep walking past him. And then I'd be like, hi, Jonathan. <laughs> so she'd give me the like, go ahead. Like, yeah, it's the right person. Or I've had my mom, like if we were meeting at a Starbucks, I've had my mom sitting at the opposite side of the Starbucks and like sees him as he comes up and she'll text me and be like, yes, it's the right guy. So those are some things that I do that guys don't know about. They would be like totally unaware, but it makes me feel a lot more safe and secure. And that way I'll never get bamboozled. Another thing that I do, which you'll see from the screenshot I showed, here again of my profile is I don't say that I'm blind. I do have photos of me with my guide dog, with him in harness. So if they were like super sleuth, they'd find out, like they'd kind of put two and two together. But honestly, I don't think anybody has ever put two and two together. But then I feel like I'm like kind of being honest, like it's there, I'm not hiding it, but I'm not saying it up front. And that's because the reality is with the statistics saying that I am more likely to get abused or be targeted than the average woman, I don't want to put my myself out there for those type of people, for men who are going to be controlling, for men who are going to be more manipulative or seek out vulnerable women or women they view as being more vulnerable. And the reality is they would look at somebody like me and think those things. Think she's blind, she's gonna be easier to control, manipulate, she's gonna be more vulnerable, I'm gonna go for a girl like her. Even if they're not thinking that like consciously, abusive men will be thinking that subconsciously. And so I don't want to put like any of those red flags in my profile for them to be like swipe so I just don't put it and the reality is I don't want somebody swiping on me left or right or like hearting or xing me because I'm disabled so I don't put it in my profile that said I typically do tell them before the date so what I do is within conversation if we've been talking for like a week going back and forth and I feel like we have good chemistry a good connection seems like a decent guy that's when I'll kind of be like hey by the way and if they're like nope not interested anymore more, then great. I didn't have to waste my time any further. That way my time doesn't get wasted and their time doesn't get wasted. Yeah. So I don't know. Those are some of the things that I do to make me feel more safe. And that is the reality of dating with a disability, especially as a female. And what was that? That was a strange noise. That was a strange noise. It says you're mine. You're mine. Am I yours? You're not going anywhere. I know. No, you'll always be my number one man. Always. Oh, that's another thing. He's gotta like dogs because this is a buy one, get one free kind of situation and that ain't about to change anytime soon. So liking a dog is definitely a prerequisite to dating me. Yeah, 
So that's kind of some of the stuff I wanted to share with you today. I know it was super rambly and just word vomit, but that's just a typically Molly kind of way to do it. So I hope you guys maybe learned something new. I think as scary as those statistics are to know, and as much as I've let them fill me with like self-doubt and negativity in the past, I'm glad I know them because it does make me more aware of being safe and the steps and precautions that I should take and that I think other women should take. So I hope this kind of helped you become a little bit more aware. I hope you enjoyed this video and definitely check out Facebook dating on your Facebook app. I actually got an Instagram comment on a photo that I posted recently from somebody who said that they actually found their boyfriend on Facebook dating a couple months ago and have never been happier. And that gave me a lot of hope. We are all gonna find love in 2020. All right, I love you guys so very much. Let me know what other videos you wanna see from me in the future and I'll see you next time. Bye.